Hello and welcome to this edition of Money in Motion video blog. This is Dan Perkins and today we're going to talk about something a little different. We're going to talk about what's going on in Iraq and eventually what is it going to mean potentially to the US markets and to our portfolios. So uh, let's start with the fact that the insurgents are working their way down on the western border of Iraq from Syria taking a series of small towns and a lot of open space that's desert. Uh, as of last report, they were about 40 miles from Baghdad. So their activity is so, so far uh, confined to the north east portion of the country. They are a considerable distance away past Baghdad down to the oil fields. But uh, this is really what I want to talk about. Um, the oil markets have um, moved to the, above their most recent high, trading around $107 a barrel. That movement is not by any means a growth in the economy of anywhere in the world except China, but it is a fair factor of concern to what would happen if the, if the insurgents were to take over the oil fields in southern Iraq. Uh, I think that the government at the moment is, is uh, trying to hold the city of Baghdad and is less concerned about uh, the rest of the country. Um, the president uh, moved a carrier and a couple of destroyers uh, closer to Iraq and uh, within striking distance of the aircraft on the aircraft carrier and he, he brought in about 300 Marines to help bar guard the, uh, the billion dollar embassy in, in, in Baghdad. So the oil markets are beginning to get nervous about what could happen. Now at 106 to 107 dollars a barrel, we're in the 350 to 390 per gallon for regular gas on a national basis. Uh, my concern is that uh, if the tensions continue to escalate, and uh, whether they capture Baghdad or not, if they move south of Baghdad towards the southern and eastern western portion of uh, Iraq and start to take over the oil fields, um, then we could be in serious trouble. Now I think it's possible that if they move past Baghdad, assuming that the, the government and the United States can hold the city of Baghdad, uh, and there's a good possibility that they will, but it will become an isolated capital, I believe that the terrorists will probably move south. If they start in showing a direction that they're heading south towards the oil fields, the major oil fields in Iraq, then I think we have a situation where crude oil might go to as much as $115. So if crude oil goes to $115 a barrel, we are probably looking at four and a quarter to four dollars and fifty cents a gallon for uh, domestic gasoline in the United States. Of course, higher in Europe. Uh, but my concern is that if they get control of the oil fields and they shut down the flow of oil, um, then we have a situation where we start to have potentially a shortage of oil and so the OPEC nations uh, are somewhat in control and I would expect to see that if we break $115 and the political environment, the terrorists get more and more control. Um, I think we could break out of $115 and by the end of the summer perhaps be looking at $150 which would be a new all-time high for crude oil and maybe going higher. At $150 a barrel for, for crude oil we're looking at something in the neighborhood of five and a half to six dollars a gallon in the United States. Now that's an enormous price increase. Uh, so how do we affect, how does it affect our portfolio, meaning the stocks and bonds that we own, if in fact we see a significant spike in the retail price of gas. Roughly speaking, for every dollar increase in the price of gasoline, you can take one point off the GDP of the United States. So if we're at, uh, say, three and a half, three and three quarters today, we go to five, uh, we're going to have the potential uh, very close to negative GDP. And the reason I say that is the International Monetary Fund has revised its growth forecast for the United States for 2014 to be 2%. Now that's going to be hard to do when the first quarter was minus 1% and 
and things look a little sluggish in the second quarter. So that if we have uh, a spike in oil prices, we could see uh, a significant slowdown in consumer spending, which represents 65% of the economy. So I think a lot of people will start getting nervous about what's the likelihood of companies being able to make profits. And so I would expect the American stock market plus other stock markets in the industrialized nations who depend upon Middle Eastern oil for their survival, uh, I would expect to see that the, there'd be a, a global sell-off probably in the 10 to 15, maybe 20% range to be a full correction. Now, what's going to be very important is what happens for second quarter GDP. Um, if we have another negative number in the second quarter, then we have two consecutive quarters of negative growth in GDP. We have, by all economic measures, a recession. Um, I think that the Federal Reserve may in fact have to reverse policy and continue to be accommodative much longer than anticipated. So I'd expect to see the capital markets sell off. I would expect to see interest rates on Treasury securities, uh, the rates fall, meaning the prices go up, so that uh, high quality fixed income investments are going to be very attractive as an alternative to growth equity. So the question becomes, how are we protected in our portfolios? Those of you who see this are, are, are clients of mine. Well, you all know that I am a great believer in owning the oil and natural gas in the ground, not exploring for it after it's been explored in what is called a royalty trust. I suspect that the royalty trusts will see significant move up as the price of crude oil. We've already seen that in our portfolio in positions like Vanguard Natural Resources, the Prudhoe Bay uh, Royalty Trust, and other Permian Basin so that the royalty trusts are moving because of the anticipated increased price of oil. That means that our prices will go up and a bunch of the, potentially our dividends will increase in terms of cash flow at a higher price. On the other hand, if the market, if the market does correct to a significant level uh, later in the summer, the, the TVT puts that we own uh, will protect us to some degree on the downside. So we're going to have an appreciating asset in the form of the royalty trust in our oil interest and at the same time we'll have some protection for a declining asset in American equities as the world tries to sort itself out. So from that standpoint I think we're pretty well hedged not that we're not going to see some decline but we will dramatically up, outperform the stock market because of the hedging positions that we have. So on what interest. I would like to do is I want to end this uh, video blog by talking about what are the other ramifications if the scenario that I see happens um, in, in Iraq. Uh, we would be looking at the possibility of significant turmoil continuing through the summer. And as we turn to the Labor Day weekend, it's possible that we could see gasoline prices between five and six dollars a gallon and the American electorate is going to be outraged at the amount of money they're spending on gasoline to fuel their cars. I would expect to see significant political pressure by the people who've not been engaged when gasoline gets to five, five and a quarter, five fifty a gallon in pressuring their congressmen and senators to vote for Keystone Pipeline, Pipeline excuse me, and for all other carbon-based energy projects. Uh, I suspect that drilling will continue to accelerate in the Dakotas and in West Texas. And I think that uh, the Democrats are going to have a difficult time at the poll because of what's going on in the Middle East. Now, the president made this bed and his party members are going to have to live with it. But I suspect now that if the scenario unfolds as I see it, the punishment that the Democrats are going to receive both in the House or Senate is now going to be much larger than it was prior to the problems in the Middle East. So look for a significant, significant shift in how the voters think they're going to vote in, in November. Uh, those of them who, those of us who are living so close to the paycheck to paycheck and a significant increase in price of energy, you know, spending $100 to fill your tank could be very significant for many, many people. So I think the political environment could change dramatically if in fact this Iraq scenario unfolds. It doesn't appear, at least as of this uh, reporting, that the president is 
doing anything of substance other than some token with the 350 Marines, 300 Marines, excuse me, who were there to protect the embassy. But as far as boots on the ground, that's not going to happen. And whether or not the aircraft, the uh, drones and the fighters off of the ships will be used depends on whether or not we want to put people on the ground to act as spotters to uh, direct the aircraft to the targets that need to be hit. I don't know that we have enough people there to do that. And whether we will trust the, uh, the Iraqi soldiers uh, to, to, to accept that responsibility. So it could be a very hot summer. Um, portfolios are holding up very well. The market does look like it's toppy. Uh, it's moving 20 points, 2 points, 3 points, 5 points a day, up and down. It doesn't seem to have any real conviction going into the summer. So the, uh, the political crisis in the, in the Middle East, the crisis at the border of immigration, and many other things uh, are going to weigh through the summer. And I think it's going to be a very difficult summer. I'll do my best to make sure that we're protected as best we can. But uh, earning dividends could be a wonderful way to spend our summer vacation. That's all for now. This is Dan Perkins. Should you have questions, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. And always, if you have friends or family members who are looking for a real money manager, please have them give me a call. Thanks for watching.